In this episode, we're going to be talking about how to install Ubuntu on a computer, Clean Boot. And why would you want to do this? A simple reason why is because Ubuntu is just cool. Uh, Ubuntu is free, it's open source, and it will generally run faster on your equipment than, let's say, for instance, a Windows computer would work. Now, I don't necessarily recommend this for everyone, but if you're a programmer, it might be a really good idea to start getting used to using a Linux computer. And the reason is, is because, especially if you're doing web development, uh, what ends up happening is that when you deploy to your to a server, the server, nine times out of ten, is going to be a Linux-based server, uh, some form of, of, of Linux, one of the many offshoots of it. And Ubuntu is one of those offshoots that's very popular and there's a lot of bait on uh, debate on which one if Ubuntu is a great server one um, I'm not gonna get into that here but I personally like it Ubuntu both for my home and birth and the server I, I manage some servers that use Ubuntu server and they work great and the good thing about it is you have a common ecosystem if you use your co your computer at home and it's you know, using Ubuntu and then you go to work on the server it's using the same exact commands and formats and files and everything so that makes it really convenient so here's what you do to install Ubuntu on a new computer. We're going to be doing the home version. And the home version consists of, you know, a desk, you go here to the Ubuntu.com site as I'm doing. Then you click on downloads. And you can actually click desktop from right there, it looks like. And then you click on desktop right here at the top. Um, you'll see if you needed this the server version, it's here. Uh, but we're going to do the desktop version. And then you just pick the version you want. Right now, the 13.04 has a lot of new features. Um, and I've been I always use a cutting edge. It's not necessarily the best one. These ones LTS um, that means that they have long term support, and those are going to be the releases that are the most stable. I tend to go with the most new because I like all the new features and I want to see what's going to happen next. So to download this, you just choose if you need 32 bit or for 62 4 bit. And there they are. You choose. You click download, and then it'll take you to a page that looks like like. Uh, like this, it'll ask you for a contribution because it is a free product, and they ask you to product to, to contribute as much as you like the product. Um, personally, I've never contributed. To be honest, shame on me. I know. Uh, maybe one day I will, but for now, you you get here. It's not that you have to pay. You just have to click down here at the bottom if you don't want to pay. It says not now. Take me to download, and it'll start your download. And then once it takes this, it's a very large file. It's almost a gig, and then it'll start to download on your computer. Um, that that's how you start the process. Then once it downloads, which I'm going to stop it, cancel. You're going to want to do this. If you're on a Mac machine or if you're on a Windows machine, it doesn't matter. Search on Google for Unet Bootin, and it's at unetbootin.sourceforge.net, and you'll find it. If not, I'll put this in the show notes. Uh, and then you're going to go ahead and download it for whatever system you're on. Okay, which we'll go ahead and download it right now, just to show you how it works. Okay, we're not going to wait for this to download. We're just going to go ahead and skip ahead to after it's downloaded, and we'll show you how to open up Unet Bootin and create your bootable drive. Okay, so here we are inside of Unet Bootin. Uh, we'll start right here. Now that we have Unet Bootin going up and running, uh, we can use it as such. Uh, you can just pick the distribution you want, or if you have that downloaded, the ISO image, a disk image, you can just pick the, di the disk image, navigate to it, and then if you have your drive connected, you have to pick it down here. Um, I've already done this all and I have a USB and I'll show you in a minute but once you've done all of this it, you'll be able to just hit OK and then this program will take a few minutes to to install it and that's where we're gonna stop this portion of the screencast continue to watch and you'll see uh, the whole to set up from installing it from the USB to setting your boot features everything okay so what we've done so far is we've uh, downloaded Ubuntu we've downloaded UNET Bootin We've created our bootable USB drive. We have it right here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to push this into our, you know, plug it into our computer that we have right here. And uh, with this with this drive, what we'll do then is we'll open, turn on the computer. We'll uh, go into the BIOS and set it up to boot off of the USB drive first. And what that allows us to do is to boot the installation before the operating system. That way we can overwrite whatever operating system is currently on it. Okay, picking up from where we left off, we now have the USB installed on our computer. We're just going to flip it on right now. And you'll notice it'll start to boot up. Now, my motherboard is an MSI motherboard, and I've learned that you have to hit the delete key to boot up the, uh, the BIOS settings. So here's what I've done. We're in BIOS now. Now, to get to where I want to in this BIOS, your BIOS might be different. But basically, you want to look for a setting in here 
that says, just like this one, boot sequence. And what we'll do is we'll hit enter to change this, and you'll see that mine's already been set up for this. But basically all you do is you click on it and choose where you want to do. And this is the important part. You'll notice that it says, first boot device at the top, and that's been set to USB. And that's the way yours should look when you're getting ready to install Ubuntu for the first time. So we'll exit now. And mine wasn't changed, but yours will probably be changed, so you want to save those changings. Now it'll start back up. Okay, so here's the Ubuntu installation boot screen. It's loading up all its resources so that it can start, uh, we can install our operating system. It's much the same as any other operating system, Windows, Mac, whatever. Um, so now we're getting into the installation screens. And from here you can actually play with Ubuntu the first time without installing it, just by hitting the Try Ubuntu button. But we're going to go ahead and we've, I've determined I want this, so I'm going to install it. So I just click on Install. I click I want to download the updates, which will bring the latest copies. Now you can only do this if you're connected to the internet, obviously. And I also want to install third-party software, which will allow me to watch movies, MP3s, listen to music, and all the basic things you want to do with your computer in addition to. So we'll hit continue here. Now I'm going to erase my current Ubuntu install. I had one on here. I was trying to do something, but that's neither here nor there. But uh, it'll say, it might say Windows for you, and it, whatever it is. But you can install it, or you can install Ubuntu alongside another distribution or another operating system. But we're going to go ahead and just install it all over again. So we're going to say, here are a couple of things. You can choose to encrypt your Ubuntu installation, and you can choose to, uh, to do some other, uh, you know, to have more control over your partitions. But we're just going to do a simple, you know, install for this, this tutorial. So here I picked my SDA first, my first drive. Be careful, I have two hard drives on here. So I'm going to pick my first one, and this will now install the entire Ubuntu on my first hard drive. There. Install. So I have to pick where we're at. Um, here it thinks I'm in Tijuana. I'm just going to leave that there because it's close enough to where I am. Uh, click continue. We're going to scroll up here to English for me because I have an English keyboard. It's our keyboard set up. Um, I don't want UK English. I want normal US English anyways. So we click on there's two things. We have US English set up. We'll hit continue again. You have to pick your name. Well, I'm just going to type in my name here which is probably going to be raised from the live video so sorry. Okay. Password. Okay, I I personally choose not to log in automatically. You can do whatever you want. It's your your setup. Um, I do require my password, and I and I do not encrypt my home folder. These are all options you can do on your own. So there it is. We're going to be now installing Ubuntu for the first time on this computer. Um, I'm going to stop the video here, and I'll show you pick it back up from after it's been installed. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, so we're starting up again for the first time after Ubuntu install. Mine's going to probably start really fast because I'm using a solid state drive. As you can see there, it booted up in seconds. Uh, you couldn't even tell how fast it booted. Uh, now, that might not be as fast as yours. Again, I have a solid state drive on this computer, and this is a computer with mostly old parts. Uh, so we can log in now, and you'll have your first run at Ubuntu. And there it is, the Ubuntu Unity desktop. Now, to be honest, uh, the reason I'm having to reinstall this is because I had Fedora on here on before, and I was really irritated with Fedora after some, using it for some time. I did not like the Unity, the Genome Shell uh, more than I didn't like the Unity desktop, so I went back to Unity. So here I am in the Unity desktop. Uh, the reason I use computer is twofold. I do some development on it, and I also communicate with the development team. And more importantly, I also use it as a network file sh sh server. Uh, for my local computer network here in my house. And so you can use it for the same thing. It has all the features built into it. Uh, big corporations use them for, for networks. So if you use it at home, you can use it for network too. Uh, so some of the things that make Ubuntu so great. Also another thing that makes it great uh, is with all NIC systems, it has an awesome terminal, something you don't get in Windows. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'll have another one following up showing you 
what you should do after you install Ubuntu.